Hi, uh, very good afternoon to everyone. So I'm here to talk about the key to a simulating chaos from a technology and entrepreneurship perspective. Now, what is chaos by classic definition? Chaos is the absence of order, right? Um, how many of you here have heard of chaos theory? Quick show of hands. 10 people. How many of you have seen Jurassic Park? So all of you should have heard about chaos theory. Dr. Ian Malcolm talks about it in the movie, right, where he says um, the smallest change can disrupt a complex system and throw it into complete chaos, right, make it un unpredictable. Now, another theme that comes out of the chaos theory is the underlying order that's there in chaos. Now, this might sound a little antithetical, right? It may seem, because chaos is the absence of order, how do you have order in chaos? Let me give you a quick example of order in chaos. All of you are familiar with Indian roads. Think about a typical traffic intersection in India, right? Um, not the ones with the signal, but just a typical intersection. You have a bunch of cars moving in a particular direction. You have a bunch of cars coming from another side. Um, there's no one really controlling. These people will keep inching a little forward. The minute that they get a little space, this car will go, and then all of these guys will follow after him. And then these people will try the same tactic, and eventually they'll also go. On the left, you'll find a bunch of bikes and autos coming on the wrong side of the road. Um, you'll see a person in front of you trying to take a left, so he gives the indicator, and then two bikes will immediately speed up and overtake him from the left. And in all of this, we see a bunch of people just walking across the road, walking everywhere. How many of us have shown this hand to oncoming traffic, like, you know, like we're the hulks and we have the right of passage, right? How many of us have done this? Show of hands. Everyone, right? This is a chaotic environment. This is chaos. We think of chaos, we think of randomness, of complexity, um, of, of just over being, being overwhelmed. Now, I want you to sort of have an out-of-body experience with this traffic scenario and see it a little bit from the above. Right? Now, you're looking down at this traffic scene and you're seeing what's unfolding beneath you. One minute, two minutes, five minutes, you, you just keep observing. You hover there. Does anything change? This is all still happening, right? This, this chaotic mess, it's, it's still happening. But then does a concept of, an underlying concept of some sort of harmony, unspoken harmony come about? But you see that things are progressing. There are cars which are moving this way, the bikes are still coming. It's almost like we Indians have mastered chaos theory. We can predict the unpredictable and make room for it. Which is also why they say that you know, if you drive in India, you can drive anywhere in the world. Right? You, you kind of start seeing this concept of order and chaos. Now, why am I talking about this? One of the biggest examples around us today of order and chaos is technology, modern day technology. Let me give you a quick example. Computers. The first computer that came, the ENIAC, you know that you have to input data using mechanical levers. Right? Most of us would just have heard about this. So you use mechanical levers to input data. The next level was punch cards. The next was keyboards. Then the next was um, touch screen. Then it's voice. The next will probably be brain waves. And all of this, I mean, this is all happening erratically, different people over a period of time, this is chaotic. But then if you step back and you look at the pattern that's emerging, you see that first we were using the full hand to input data. Then with the punching cards, it became fingers. And then it became fingertips with the keyboard. And then it became one fingertip with the touch screen. And then we moved on to voice, and then the next will be brain waves. So there is a definite pattern that has emerged. And no one person has sat and said, we will do this. This is how we will plan the evolution of the computer. So why am I specifically bringing up modern day technology? Why am I saying modern day? I mean, technology, in essence, is a set of skills, uh, methods, techniques that you apply to make your life better, to achieve certain goals, um, to be able to solve problems. And humankind has existed for millennia. So so should have technology. And then actually, if we step back, we can see examples of this. There was a person called Sushrut who um, came up with the tools to do plastic surgery many centuries ago. There was someone who came up with the idea of building the pyramids, using the ramp and the pulley system to be act actually able to do that. There was somebody who came up with the concept of a rust-free iron pillar. In fact, they say that the first version of the steam engine 
was invented in Greece in the first century. And why technology um, from then has not really been able to become or become full blown the way it is now? Why is modern day technology growing by leaps and bounds and this didn't happen then? In fact, a lot of this was lost out. There's so many examples. We lost out on what happened. Let me give you a quick clue about this. Um, we've all heard of Shah Jahan. Show fans, Shah Jahan's story of Taj Mahal. He cut off the hands of all his artisans. That's a clue there for you, and I'll come back to this. So, quick question again. Where is the seat of modern day technology? Where is all of the innovation we see around us actually happening? Which particular place or country or region in the world? Any guesses? It's a superpower. Yep, United States of America. So what have they done? What have they been able to do that so many other countries haven't? Why India hasn't with millennia of civilization. What is that secret sauce that happened? What happened in the United States of America? The key, the answer here is collaboration. That's what they cracked. They shared information. Knowledge was shared. It didn't die. I mean, imagine Shah Jahan as the CEO of Apple and not Steve Jobs, cutting off all the hands of people who designed the first smartphone. You would have the eighth wonder of the world now in the Apple headquarters in a little case. So we think about technology. We think about technology being order in chaos, bringing order in chaos. And the key here is with collaboration. If you think about it, the internet is a result of collaboration. Open source is all about collaboration. And look at all the things that are coming from it. And a lot of innovation in the US has happened stemmed from the universities. The universities have set the stage for this kind of thing to come to the world. Now let's look at the population of the US. It's about 323 million people. Let's look at India. India is plus one billion. And we also have great universities. We have the IITs, IIITs, NITs, MITs, you know, whatever, OUs, JNTUs. We have so many universities. We have so many people. So why is no world-class innovation really coming out of India? And going back to the clue of Shah Jahan, it's because we're not sharing. We're not collaborating. If we hoard, where will we go with that? Maybe it's a mindset. I, I'm thinking maybe it's a mindset issue, right? You look at parents at home, they don't want the child to go out. They want to hoard the kid, let him not leave the nest. We look at ourselves, we're hoarding our potential. It goes with us to the deathbed. We look at this, this conference right now, here today, with all of you sitting here in the audience. There's a general you know, concept around how there aren't enough women in, uh, in conferences, especially tech conferences. Now, there's a very simple thing that you can do to change that. You share that information with five of your female friends, and suddenly you've disrupted the system. Next time, you have not only equal, but maybe higher ratios of women to men, right? Let me ask you another question. How many of you have startup ideas? Show of hands, like want to build a startup? Great, about 15 people in the audience? Great. And how many of you have shared that idea with at least five people? Three unknown to you? No one? Why? Do you think your idea will be stolen? Do you think someone's going to build it better than you? God forbid, I actually hope that happens because at least that way the world will get that idea. Right now you're holding your cards so close to you, they're never going to see the light of day. What's stopping us? You could go to a tech conference tomorrow. For all you know, you meet five people. One of them could be your Steve Jobs co-founder. And you have a brilliant company. Again, coming back to you know, the key being collaboration here. You look at this university today here. You're all studying here. You have a tech company in the same campus. How many of you have gone to them, approached them, asked them what kind of problems do you have? Can we set a team together, do a pilot, and solve that problem for you? Of all the people who answered, the 15 people who said we want to start up, have you done this? Why not? They're right here. You have access to them. Just go and ask. And what will that do? You solve a problem for one person, and then you realize that multiple people have the same problem, and that's how a business is started. You're solving this with the same solution, the same problem for multiple people. And that's a startup. That's a startup in itself. And that's, again, come about because of collaboration. You can approach the tech company for internships. They're customers for internships. And that's how you move forward. If we are able to bring academia, industries, you know, each other together, we start sharing, collaborating. 
that's when we would be able to truly innovate. So in summary, um, with a quick example of what I have done, so with my company, we have created a software called RED, which is an extended reality authoring software. Now it is built because of collaboration. We were able to make this software because somebody else worked on a VR headset, somebody else worked on a computer with a great graphics card, and all of this came together to sit on one system. The, the software itself is collaboration because we are allowing, we are democratizing access to augmented and virtual reality technologies for non-coders. That is information sharing. And this is essentially what we need today to be able to truly bring innovation out of our country. And in this entire chaotic talk with all of its random elements and multiple points that I've made, the central idea is that chaos is real, it's all around us, it's here to stay, and if we think we're in control, we're as deluded as John Hammond was in Jurassic Park. And the best we can do is to use chaos, is to assimilate it, to bring order, and to be able to innovate, to really make something out of this. So remember this, too many cooks don't spoil a broth. You just need to get them to harmonize together to have your MasterChef broth. Thank you.